Hi everyone, welcome to AI Learn Painting. I am Robin. In today's video, we are taking a little journey to the forest. A couple of weeks ago, I visited Sequoia National Park in California. Now that I'm back, I really miss the view and the cooler temperature in the Sequoia Forest. So today, I am going to relieve those moments by making a Sequoia tree painting. Sequoia trees are some of the largest and longest living organisms on Earth. The General Sherman tree in Sequoia National Park is the world's largest tree by volume. It's about 275 feet or 84 meters tall and has been growing for over 2,000 years. Since I took hundreds of pictures in the park, I'm going to use one of my favorites as the reference photo for my painting today. I took this particular photo on the Congress Trail, which is close to the famous General Sherman tree. This big group of sequoias are called the Senate. You can see the clear blue sky, giant sequoias with iconic orange tree bark, and surrounding pine trees. However, the only problem is that the reality is too complicated. Looking at this photo, there are so many trees in the picture, and they all have different shapes. The light and shadow also making this painting extra difficult, and more importantly, because the trees are so tall, I have to take this picture from a weird angle. So I'm hoping I can have some variation of this photo with less details and a better angle. For an experienced artist, they might be able to make a great painting with the photo as reference. However, as a beginner, I'm going to use all the help I can get. My little help for today is Mid Journey. To use Mid Journey, you will need to first register and subscribe to a plan in midjourney.com. Once the account is ready, you can go to the Discord channel and find the Mid Journey bot under direct message. Now you are ready to start your creations. Since I have a real photo reference today, I am going to click the plus button here and it gives me the option of uploading a picture. One thing to notice is that if you are taking a photo with an iPhone and airdrop it to your laptop, Discord in the web browser might not be able to work with the default photo format. However, you can go around this issue by downloading the Discord app on your phone and upload your photo in the app. Once the upload is complete, you can access the photo with your laptop too. Now that the upload is complete, I left-click the photo and then right-click it to select Copy Image Address. When I'm writing my prompt, I will paste the link in the prompt so that Mid Journey will take this photo as part of the inputs. For the text part, since I already have a photo with lots of information, I will just simply write Acrylic Painting Giant Sequoia Tree. Then I paste the link to the photo here. Also, I'm changing the aspect ratio to 3-4 to match my canvas. With these four generated pictures, I like the style and the layout of the second one. So I'm clicking this V2 button to see whether Mid Journey can provide me with some similar variations. Looking at these variations, I like the first one and the last one. I choose the number 4 because it has an area of orange tree bark on the left sequoia. Versus in the number 1, the entire tree bark is brown. I like the idea of showing more orange in the picture because orange tree bark is the icon of sequoias. I need to make sure I keep this characteristic. With the mid-journey prompt, you can also do your own experiments and change the photos dramatically. For example, in this generation, it's sunset time. The clouds are turning orange, and the trees are getting more vibrant colors. I can also add a deer in the picture, or change the season. I visited this park in summer, and now I get to see how it looks like in the winter. Play with the prompts, and sometimes the results will amaze you. Also, I want to talk about why I'm using the Upload Photo function today. Since Mid Journey is a text-to-image AI tool, I don't have to provide any reference photos. Just using plain text should be able to get me something similar in theory. 
However, because I already have some ideas of the layout and surroundings of the expected picture, if I want to achieve them with text only, I will need to write a long and specific prompt, something like acrylic painting, giant sequoia trees, three giant trees centered, looking up angle, clear blue sky, forest with pine tree, light green grass. So I think it's just easier to upload something that already meets some of my expectations. On the other hand, if you are just brainstorming ideas, using plain text prompts will help you release the imagination. I'm using a very general prompt, giant sequoia trees acrylic painting. And look at the third picture. It's sequoia trees in front of a reflection lake. How creative! Now with my reference photo ready, I'm going to paint it in acrylic. I want to make it clear that I'm not affiliated with any of the tools that I'm about to introduce. I just want to share my personal experience with you. I'm using a 9x12 canvas sheet. I used green frog tape to protect the edges. I'm also using a disposable paper palette. For the paints, I have burnt amber, burnt sienna, paints gray, light green permanent, hooker's green deep hue, sap green permanent, cobalt blue, and titanium white. You can definitely work with different brands or different shades of colors. If you are interested to learn how to mix the desired colors with the help of ChatGPT, check out this tutorial. For the brushes, I use a half-inch flat brush to paint the larger area. I will use this fluffy head brush for the leaves. It's actually a very old brush with broken bristles. If you don't have this kind of brush, you can use a piece of sponge or just use a paper towel. I will show you how to paint leaves with them later. Finally, I'm also using various sizes of angle brushes and filbert brushes to add details. I start with painting the background colors. I fill the top four-fifths of the canvas with cobalt blue and titanium white, and the bottom of the canvas with burnt amber and paints gray. I like to use paints gray as a substitute of black, because black is usually very strong. Adding a little bit might already darken my mixture too much. With paints gray, there will be lots of room for error. When I'm painting the bottom part, I do not worry about mixing my paints evenly. Because naturally, there are lights and shades on the forest floor. So varying the color will create a more realistic painting. Then I'm mixing the sap green permanent and light green permanent together to suggest the depth of the forest. I paint short vertical lines to represent trees. And again, I'm not worrying about mixing paints evenly. Before I start to paint any trees in detail, I'm going to show you how to paint leaves. For a forest painting like this, we obviously cannot paint the leaves one by one. That will take forever. So the general idea is to paint a bunch of leaves at one time, but also remember to make some variations each time to avoid making repeated patterns. For a broken bristle brush like this, because the bristles are pointing at different directions. It can leave very small marks on the canvas instead of a whole big blob of paint. I dip the brush in the paint and then lightly apply pressure on the canvas. Between each brush stroke, I turn and twist the brush to make sure I'm not making any repeating shapes. Using the sponge is a similar process. First, you can choose a surface that you like ideally a bumpy surface. You can even tear the sponge apart to create some irregular edges. And then just lightly dip it in the paint and lightly apply pressure on the canvas. Turn the sponge between each stroke. If you don't have a broken bristle brush or a sponge, you can simply use a paper towel. Crumble it into a ball and maybe do it several times so that you can create an uneven and bumpy surface. Similarly, you can make it work with anything that has a bumpy surface. Just remember to only take a small amount of paint each time, and try this technique on your practice paper before applying it on the canvas. 
Okay, now back to painting. For the tree barks, I'm using the burnt sienna for the brighter left side and burnt amber for the darker right side. I am also painting a few super dark spots with paints gray to represent the burnt marks on this sequence. Here is a fun fact. Fire is essential to the reproduction of sequoias. They rely on fire to open up the pine cones and release their seeds. So when you see burnt marks on sequoia, that means nature has created an opportunity for these trees to reproduce. Now I'm using my broken bristle brush to paint leaves. I apply sap green permanent and hooker's green deep hue as the base color, and then I apply the mixture of light green permanent and sap green permanent as a brighter layer. I decided to paint a fallen tree in the front. I think it would be cool to show different stages of sequels in one painting. There is a smaller and younger tree in the middle, and two bigger and older trees. And I'm adding the tree bark of a fallen sequel in the front. It might have been there for a while, so the orange layer on the tree bark is gone. All that left is the brown and grayish color and some dark cracks. This is what my painting looks like. You might notice the painting is not an exact replica of the reference photo, but that's okay. Artistic interpretation and personal style play a significant role in creating unique pieces. So use the reference photo as a guide, but allow yourself the freedom to experiment and add your own flair. Remember, art is subjective, and your interpretation is what makes your painting special. I encourage each and every one of you to experiment with Meet Journey. Start with a photo you liked, maybe a nice scenery photo you took during your vacation. Then ask Meet Journey to generate some fun variations for you. Or you can release your imagination by using a general text prompt and get some very creative results from Meet Journey. I would love to see what you come up with. So feel free to share your creations in the comment section down below. Let's inspire and support each other on this creative journey. Thank you for watching today's tutorial. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting AI-related painting content. Until next time, happy image generation and happy painting!